This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This week, another important health update for your pets, strengthening the human-animal bond, and which are the top pet-friendly cities in the United States. That's what's on our show this week. Let's get started. Hey. Do you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's national award-winning author and animal advocate, Susan Marie. Welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves, Francesca, Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Miss Olive is the cute little Italian greyhound rescue in the picture with the microphone. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. Email us at doggydivashow at aol.com. That's D-O-G-G-Y-D-I-V-A show at AOL.com. We love hearing from you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. I'm here with Monica Layton, President of Professional Pet Sitting, and here with our Pet Tip of the Week. And we're entering into a very important week, which is the ASPCA Prevention to Cruelty to Animals. So, Monica, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, April is actually um, Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Month. So throughout the whole month, they're doing lots of things to bring awareness to animal cruelty. Um, some things that you can do at home, um, they have some petitions on their website, which is www.aspca.org. And they're looking for your help to get their voices heard and get bills passed to help with animal safety. Um, they have one that um, they earmarked actually as April 8th is their annual National Dog Fighting Awareness Day. And they've got some um, bills out there that they're looking to get people's pledges and signatures on online um, for dog fighting awareness. There's also um, some on there for horses. They've been having, um, you know, some issues with, you know, horse cruelty, um, and then also, you know, other campaigns that they have throughout the year. So that's one thing that you can absolutely help ASPCA, you know, fulfill their mission and really getting laws changed to where pets can be safe and be covered. And, you know, when unfortunately, when bad things happen to pets without these bills, there's no way to, you know, truly, truly get the justice that, you know, these pets deserve. So having these laws in place against animal cruelty and different things really makes the punishment harsher and uh, makes people think, you know, before they before they tend to, um, you know, do something that would that would hurt an animal. Um, another thing is if you suspect animal cruelty, um, if you see something, definitely say something, but say it. In the correct way to where, you know, it's not a danger to you, not a danger to the pet or anybody else. So tips on how to uh, report cruelty. 
a written, you know, statement um, is always wonderful. It helps law enforcement when everything, you know, is written out for them. If there's any photographs, that is extremely helpful to them as well. Um, but do not put yourself in danger to get them. Um, they say you should never go on anybody's property without their permission. But if you're able to take photos from a vehicle or from the road safely, then that is always helpful. If you can provide law enforcement with any names or contact information or any, you know, firsthand information that you may have about any kind of abusive um, situation that's helpful to them, um, it is always possible to file a anonymous report. So definitely please consider, you know, if you do not want to give your information, you do not have to, you can always file anonymously, you know, just make sure that somebody, you know, does know what's going on. And if you can, if you have an instance that's going on, um, record when you report things. So if you've had a call multiple times and you start saving that information, that's very helpful to them to know, you know, we've called about this issue on these dates, these dates, I talked to these people, then they can see it's an ongoing problem. And it's not something that, you know, just occurred and, you know, obviously is not going away. Physical signs for an animal for um, cruelty, you know, having a tight collar um, that's caused neck wounds, things like that, um, being embedded in the pet's neck, any open wounds, any signs of healing wounds or injury, um, untreated skin conditions to where they have, you know, hair loss, scaly skins, bumps and rashes, um, extreme thinness or emaciation, fur infested with fleas, ticks or parasites patches of bumpy scaly rashes and adequate signs of inadequate grooming you know signs that the pet isn't being cared for any kind of weakness limping inability to stand heavy discharges from the pet's eyes or nose if you see an owner striking a pet or abusing a pet um, or also confusion or extreme drowsiness in pets are all signs of cruelty so if you see anything of that nature and you are alarmed, then remember you can report anonymously. And if you do feel comfortable giving your information, you know, that's great too. But please make sure, you know, see something, say something, you know, do the best you can to get them the information they need so they can help the animal. Though this is the month that is for preventing animal cruelty, every day should really be about it. I'm glad that they have this so that it brings so much attention to it. But it's true, Monica, if you see something, say something. That's how Olive is with me right now, because that's what someone did. So thank you very much. This is really important. Thank you. Have a great week. Hello, everyone. Miss Olive and Sophia the Doggy Diva want to thank you for your amazing response to their special book, Miss Olive Finds Her Forever Home. And they want to let you know that Miss Olive Finds Her Forever Home is now available in both hardcover and soft cover. And that's at amazon.com. As Miss Olive says, woohoo, yippee. Thank you, everyone. Coming up, strengthening the human animal bond in times of need. Stay tuned. My dog, Mojo, was half beagle and half coonhound. He ate everything in sight. He would swallow things whole, including a chicken carcass, a bird nest with a bird in it, and assorted stones and sticks. We had to take him to the veterinary emergency room. After surgery, Mojo had skin issues. He was constantly itching and scratching, chewing on his feet, and chewing the hair right off of his legs, being irritated, lethargic, and just not the same dog. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. When we put him on the Dynavite, he took right to it. All of these symptoms disappeared. Dynavite is nutrition. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Something that he actually likes to eat. You need to put him on Dynavite. Dynavite for life. If you love your dog, you don't just want him healthy, you want him to be happy. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. 
back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Since 1987, Red Rover has focused on bringing animals out of crisis and strengthening the human-animal bond through emergency sheltering, disaster relief services, financial assistance, and education. With us today is the CEO and president at Red Rover, Nicole Forsyth, to share a major milestone in one of their amazing programs. Welcome back, Nicole. We're so happy to have you you on. Yes, thanks for having me back. And we're very excited to be hearing about the uh, safe housing program, too. This is very, very big. So um, for those listeners who may not know, and we love having Nicole on because she has they do such great things at Red Rover. But for those listeners that may not be familiar, can you tell them about Red Rover? Yeah, so we like to describe Red Rover as, as like the American Red Cross for animals. It's kind of our fast way of saying it. We are really there to help when animals and people are in crisis together. So that could be a natural disaster. We help set up temporary shelters for animals during a natural disaster when people need to evacuate and they can't bring their pets with them. We provide emergency grants for people when they can't afford uh, veterinary care. And then we also help domestic violence victims and their pets escape abuse. We know that's becoming a really critical part of their inability to escape if they can't bring their pets with them. And we know that pets are used to manipulate people to come back or stay or not leave in the first place. So that's been a growing program that we'll talk more about. And then we also try to prevent crises and neglect from happening in the first place by really targeting children at a certain age to help them develop skills they need for empathy and to understand animals better so that some of this neglect and cruelty and abuse doesn't happen in the first place. That's so important. And you mentioned earlier how uh, Red Rover Relief helps domestic violence survivors escape those dangerous situations with their pets, which is so important, which is why some of them stay. You just expanded your safe housing program and are now including animal shelters as safe havens. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yes, we're really excited. Um, you know, we've been learning so much about this space, the more that we are in it. And some shelters, some domestic violence shelters just can't have pets on site for various reasons, whether space restrictions or, you know, their board of directors is just not on board with that change or, you know, they've got community, um, you know, zoning restrictions, all sorts of reasons could prevent that. So we just know they need multiple programs. Sometimes even if they can house pets on site um, in a limited capacity, too, they just aren't prepared for every situation. So they may have a behaviorally challenged animal that really needs to go someplace else, um, at least at some point in in their journey. So we have expanded the safe housing program so that now animal shelters can create, build dedicated space for domestic violence. Um, pets, the, the pets of domestic violence survivors, and um, we have now $100,000 dedicated to this expansion. So we're really, really excited um, to see how this helps increase the capacity for our community to take care of animal victims of domestic abuse. That's so awesome. And you just touched on it. You hit a major milestone with the Safe Housing Grants Program. Can you just tell us a little more about that? Yes. So we have given out um, a million dollars total in safe housing grants. That's amazing. And um, yeah, and those are grants for domestic violence shelters to specifically make become pet friendly and build on site, as well as develop other kinds of programs that might help like foster programs or, um, you know, developing some kind of program to, for dedicated sheltering space. And one of um, your goals with the Purple Leash Project is to ensure that every state has a domestic violence shelter that can accept pets. How close are you to getting to that goal? We are very close. We have a few states left, Hawaii, Mississippi, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and West Virginia. And we're pretty confident that we'll be knocking at least three more of those off the list this year. And we're working hard on um, Hawaii and Rhode Island. That's so amazing. What can we expect from the Purple Leash Project this year? We have been working with Purina, which has been ex- extraordinary for us because they're really bringing um, a lot more awareness to this as an issue. They are also providing funding for some of these domestic violence shelters to become pet friendly. So we um, are working and we're working with them to make sure some of the domestic violence shelters can apply for these Purple Leash Project grants. And then sometimes what we do as well is we'll actually not just give them the money to help the building, but we will actually have our volunteers, our Red Rover Responders volunteers, which normally help with animals, the animal sheltering operations for natural disasters or criminal cruelty cases. We're also sending volunteers to help build the actual pet facilities for the domestic violence shelters. So it's a really great way that our two programs have kind of joined up together 
And we do that with greatergood.org's rescue rebuild program where they have experts in construction and contractors who um, can help guide our volunteers as to, you know, how you pour concrete and, you know, all these different skills that, of course, they don't normally have to do but are learning um, on the spot. So that's been a really exciting a way to our two programs work together, and we'll be doing more of those builds um, this year as well as give out more of the Purple Leash Project grant. And then in addition, Sharina is really helping us increase awareness of this issue. So some of their products beginning in May will have the Purple Leash Project information on them. So that is huge for us because now every time someone goes to a store like a Target or Dollar Tree or ShopRite, they will see these um, treat bags and other products that will have information um, to just increase awareness about how pets are used in domestic violence abuse. And then in October, which is Domestic Violence Mm -hmm. Awareness Month, we'll be doing even more. So if people kind of want to find out um, what we did last year, it's a good indication of, you know, what we're going to do similar things this year. And um, if you go to purpleleashproject.com, that's Purina's website that has all the information about what we did last year and then also how to get involved and how to donate. And now, can you tell us a little bit about the Red Rover Responders Program and how could we become Red Rover Responders volunteers? Sure. If you go to redrover.org and go to the workshops and events section of the website, it lists um, the volunteer workshops that are coming up. And currently, we are looking at doing them online in the future, but that's a little ways away. Um, and of course, it's just always nice to do them in person um, if you have the chance because you really get to meet other people and, you know, meet some of our staff that get involved in the deployments. And it's just a, it's a, it makes people feel a lot more, a lot really confident before they go on one of these. So that's a great way to get involved, great way to volunteer. People who have been volunteering for Red Rover Responders uh, just say it's one of the most meaningful things they've ever done in their, in their life. So it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty impactful volunteer opportunity. We, because we're, we're a national organization, but we're relatively small, we depend heavily on our over 4,000 volunteers in U.S. and Canada who help us do these deployments. So I think knowing that when someone does become a volunteer, they really know that, that our program is dependent on them, which I think is, you know, makes them feel very, very um, needed. <laughs> it is, and it's such an amazing program. We're heard nationwide, actually we're heard worldwide, but I am in Florida, and I know, didn't you recently deployed uh, down here, correct? Yes, we did. Um, we were in Dixon County, mm. Florida, and it was um, 145 dogs. We worked with um, the Humane Society of the United States to help care for the dogs rescued from this alleged uh, severe neglect case. And, you know, they were the officials there were saying it's one of the worst they've ever mm. seen. You know, the dogs were living in hutches. They were really their skin. Their skin conditions were horrible. Um, you know, patchy, missing fur, itchy skin. Um, some of them didn't even have access to food and water. So it was a pretty bad um, neglect case, and we're we're sad. We're um, we're very sad to see the condition. Um, but it feels great to be part of that kind of situation where they can get out. Uh, communities are really turning to us and other organizations that we partner with to handle these kinds of situations, which is great to see. You know, the more the more we're able to offer a community these kinds of services, the more they'll take reports of neglect and abuse um, seriously because they know they have the resources to help. So it's a pretty um, powerful uh, partnership with the community. Well, and you know what, um, Nicole, it's really important because I, there's so many organizations that I work with around the country, but you have a special niche. You have, like, you do a lot, but you also have a niche that you incorporate other things into it, which I think is so important. And that's why I want to make sure that this gets out so that people are going to redrubber.org and finding out about you and definitely utilizing all of the amazing things that you offer. And one of the things, and we kind of touched on it earlier, is about educating the children young so that they understand it. And about um, three years ago, you uh, you started the Kind News magazine for kids. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we're really um, excited to see this grow as well. I, I believe, as a former teacher, I believe really strongly in trying to prevent a lot of, you know, things that we see happening to animals. And sometimes it's, kids just don't understand mm-hmm. what animals look like when they're scared. They don't understand that they, um, you know, what they look like when they're happy, when they're scared, when they're excited. And so if they can't understand their animal behavior, they can't feel empathy for them. 
So, you know, our, our whole mission is to make sure our kids really understand how to read animal behavior and how to practice the skills they need to be paying attention and um, experiencing empathy, both for animals and, of course, it translates over to, to other people as well. So we feel like it's a huge benefit um, to society to be able to get to these kids early and really get them to think critically about how animals should be treated. And um, we, the Kind News magazine is part of our overall Red Rover Readers program where we train teachers how to use a special curriculum to help kids practice empathy skills. The Kind News magazine is a very concrete way to sort of be introduced to what we're what we're trying trying to do. So it has um, engaging articles, really helping kids understand all kinds of animals that we interact with, that they interact with on a more regular basis. So it's not just companion animals, but mostly companion animals. And then there's games and um, you know, activities to really inspire them to kind of take action. So we have humane heroes that are real kids who've done things to help animals. The Mutt's comic strip is in there, too, which we love. And um, people can subscribe for a child they might know in their life. Um, we have two levels. There's one for the younger kids, kindergarten through second grade, and then one for third through sixth grade. So people can purchase uh, one for a child, or they can also purchase one for a teacher they might know. So there's a classroom subscription where the teacher gets 28 copies and a, and a teacher guide, and they can really easily implement the, implement the magazine in their classroom, or it can be given to a child where the child gets it at home and then the parent gets a guide for how they might want to use the magazine at home. And people can also sponsor the magazine in classrooms. So we are doing this big push this year to give the te- to give the magazine free to teachers for a year to try. So we need sponsors to help support that. And the hope is once they see it and experience it, then they'll want to continue the subscription. But it's it's our new strategy to see if we can spread kind news. That's awesome. Now, lastly, if someone wants to donate, learn more about Red Rover or kind news or, you know, any of the things that, that you are doing, where should they go? So if someone wants to subscribe to kind news or learn more about kind news, they can go to kindnews.org. And if they want to donate or learn more about what we are doing, then redrover.org is a great place to start. And you can go from, from there pretty much everything that we do. So there's donate tabs, um, how to volunteer, how to get more involved in what we're doing, and then a list of all the workshops and um, events that we have going on. It's so wonderful what you do. And Nicole, I want to thank you again for being our guest today and for all of the valuable and profound work that you are doing at Red Rover um, for Animals in a Crisis and also for uh, domestic violence and for children. It's really great what you're doing, and um, I applaud you, and I hope that everybody goes to redrover.org to learn more about all of these great programs that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming up... Where does your city rank among the best pet places in the United States? Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here. You know how they say you are what you eat? Well, guess what? Same is true for your fur babe. I have a grandpa dog, as I call him. Mr. Z is now 14. And over the years, you know, he's had his issues. But lately, he's had a lot of allergies. And I've recently put him on a solid gold diet. And I have noticed a major difference. And right now, solid gold is offering an amazing offer to all of our listeners. Yep, by visiting solidgoldpet.com slash pet life for 30% off your first order. Go ahead and take advantage of this great offer. Let's talk pets on petliferadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Americans love their pets, and we lead the world in pet industry with 145 million cats and dogs, where every state and city has its own pet personality. Apartment Guide has scoured the nation and found over 15,000 cities in the United States with at least one pet food and supply store, trainer, groomer, veterinarians, animal hospitals, and more. And here to share the top dogs when it comes to the best city for pets is Brian Carberry, the managing editor of the Apartment Guide. Hey, Brian, welcome. 
Hi, thank you. How are you? Good, good. I'm so excited to be sharing this fun uh, fun fact information with our listeners. Can you tell the listeners about the apartment guide and how you calculate and determine the best cities for pet lovers? Yeah, absolutely. So Apartment Guide is a website that helps people basically find an apartment. Just as the name says, you can go on and search an apartment in basically any city or neighborhood within a city in the country. Filter it by things like your price range that you want, your preference for, you know, pets. And, you know, this article, of course, we're talking about pets. So you can say, you know, I want a pet friendly apartment. And it can show you just those apartments that will allow dogs and cats. Uh, just to kind of better filter what you're looking for so you can find that perfect place to live. With this article, we wanted to basically, like you said, do something fun. And pets are a major factor in a lot of people's lives. And, you know, people want to live where they have accessibility to do things with their pets or it's convenient for them with their pets. So we thought we'd find the best city where people can do that. And that's really where this study came from. Can you share um, with our listeners what the top 10 best friendly, pet friendly cities are? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll go backwards, so we'll have some suspense down for one. So <laughs> number 10 is uh, Billings, Montana. You know, if you look at a per capita calculation, there are nine pet businesses there for every 10,000 people. Billings is a pretty small city, just over 100,000 people, but still plenty of opportunities and businesses for you and your pet. Number nine, going a little bit larger with the city, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, number eight, Scottsdale, Arizona. Number seven, Miami, Florida. So, you know, great place to be for being outside at any oh, time. Yeah. And, you know, dogs will love that. Uh, number six, Wilmington, North Carolina. Number five, Lakeland, Florida. Number four is Columbia, South Carolina. Number three is Orlando. So a lot of Florida coming up on this list. No. Uh, <laughs> number two is uh, Dayton, Ohio. And the number one city, which, you know, may be a surprise to some people, may not be, is Knoxville, Tennessee. I love that. And it's like, and, and incorporated in all of this, it tells you like a little bit about the city. It tells you what surrounds it. It tells you some of the pet friendly things that are going on in there. So, I mean, there's so much in there, but for those who maybe their cities are not in the top 10, where can they go to find like the top 50 for pets? Sure. So after we list the top 10 on our article on our research page here, we do list and we break down the top 50 cities for pet lovers. And again, these cities are only cities right now that are have over 100,000 people. And I know there's a lot of people that live in you know cities that maybe have 50,000 people that unfortunately are not going to be included in this top 10 or this top 50 even. Um, but if you go down a little bit further, we actually do break it down by the top 10 small cities for pet lovers as well. So we're going to give a little bit of love to these uh, people that live in those, you know, 50 to 100,000 resident cities. I have to tell you, Brian, I'm number one, Sarasota, Florida. In the top 10 small go. cities for pet lovers. I'm so excited. I was so excited when I saw this and I said, I can't wait to get Brian on so we could share it with everybody. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many things. You also have like top 10 uh, cities for best pet businesses. And there's just so much that you share. A lot of research went into it. But I have to tell you, it's a lot of fun to see. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a topic that is definitely interesting to people. Um, I mean, you do a whole show about it. So obviously there's, there's an interest for it. And it's just, you know, it's something that people can talk about. You know, there's really, you can argue between, oh, my city's better than yours for pets, but it's, it's a fun argument. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's not, it, it's something that people can have pride in, but still it's a lighthearted. It, it really is. It, it was just fun to put together. And, you know, seeing the, re the response and the reaction that people are having has just been fun for me. Well, I want to share the fun. So where can the listeners go to find out more about apartment guides and also where to find where their city's listed in this very fun and interesting list? Sure. So if you want to find out more about Apartment Guide, you can just go to the website, which is apartmentguide.com. And, and to find this study, it's on the homepage of the blog. So once you're on apartmentguide.com, on the top, there'll be a little navigation link that you can click on that says blog. Once you're there, it opens up our blog homepage. And this article, The Best Cities for Pet Lovers in America, is right up top. Well, Brian, thank you so much for being our guest today and for sharing such fun and interesting information for pet lovers everywhere. So I thank you so Absolutely. much. It was a lot of fun. And I'm sure as we're finishing this, there are people are jumping on right now trying to find out where their city lies. So thank you please, so very much. Please do. Much. All right. Thanks, awesome. Brian. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. And we'll be back in just a moment. 
Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great Diva Week, everyone. That's all for this episode of the Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com. Also, find us on our Facebook page, The Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and the Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.